Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome back. We had a good spring break and got right back to work on uh, on Monday. I had a, a good practice yesterday. It was our first practice in, in pads, and uh, guys flew around, did a, did a nice job, but we knew it was going to be a little rough after a week off. But uh, overall, we were really pleased as a staff. We just got done watching it all, and um, there was good energy, good emotion. There was a lot of good carryover. Obviously, there's some things that they forgot over a week, but uh, uh, it was it was the the trajectory or the, or the how we wanted to practice as far as getting a couple of done, getting a couple done before spring break, so they could just learn how we were doing things. Uh, and now we'll hit the ball rolling here for the next three and a half weeks with uh, 12 more practices, and we have a little bit of a break right now, um, and we won't practice again until Friday. Uh, but then we'll have uh, three or four a week, uh, the remaining three weeks, and, and uh, kind of ramp everything up. But uh, I was excited about uh, the way the guys performed yesterday. It was some good contact. It'll, it'll increase once they start learning more of what they're doing. Obviously, that's the biggest challenge right now is just the installation, and they're just their brain overload right now of all the things we're putting in. So uh, we'll open up for questions. Curious about the the rate of retention that guys are able to have with with the install, and maybe where you forecast that over the next twelve. Well, we should have most of the install in uh, by practice. I think by practice six, and we just finished practice three. We had a good amount of time before spring break where we were kind of hammering on, hey, this is going to be one, two, and three because we know uh, there's a big break between practice two and practice three. So. Uh, we had some walkthroughs. We had a number of things where those guys had to be challenged to make sure that they could have some retention. Obviously, it wasn't all there, uh, but uh, I take defense, for example. We only had a couple of defenses in, so I thought the retention was pretty good. Um, now, it's just getting back into the football mold of, of running to the football and making sure that you can keep your – uh, keep your, your mental state about you uh, as there's motions and shifts because that's something our offense does an awful lot of uh, is shift trade and motion and uh, uh, that's probably the biggest challenge it was yesterday for us. I understand we're going to have some players in here today and I very much appreciate that. A couple guys that I want to ask you about. Um, first of all, Hunter Risen. What do you think of him? Uh, Hunter's got a bright, bright future here. Um, I've been impressed with him. In the first couple of days, he made a couple of really nice catches yesterday. Uh, he's a pretty dynamic receiver. Um, learning a little bit more about him. I, I like his his demeanor. I like his his mentality and how he attacks the game. And and uh, excited to see what he can do. You know, we have we're pretty blessed to have a number of wide receivers. So, um, you know, where can we find spots for him to be successful? And the second guy ahead, uh, James Gilbert. Yeah, James. Uh, uh, getting an opportunity. He's played a lot of college football, which has really helped James in the fact that he has uh, a lot more experience than anybody else at running back back there just from his time at Ball State. And he's picking up a new offense just like all the other backs are. But I've been pleased. He's got a great quickness, great acceleration, and sees the hole well. Obviously, we haven't gone tackling or anything like that, so we'll see how that plays out over the next couple of weeks. But really pleased with James. How's Harry Trotter coming along? I mean, I know that just kind of changing systems when he got here was a little bit different than obviously a coaching change, but how has he emerged so far for you? Yeah, he's he's a pure running back. That's what I like about Harry. I don't think any of that stuff rattles him as far as what system he had at, at school at Louisville or what he came to here and, and those things. I think he's just a pure running back. I, I think he's pretty special with the ball in his hands. It's all the other things that he's got to continue to evolve, whether it's catching the ball out of the backfield or – um, pass protection and once again, learning a new system uh, as a running back it should probably be the easiest uh, of the transitions, a lot easier than O line or, or, or secondary or something. But uh, uh, Harry's going to be in the mix there. And, and once we get uh, to some scrimmage situations, we'll see what he can do. We'll see what Tyler Burns can do. We'll see what James can do. All those guys. It, it's a pretty wide open competition there. Is there a player, and maybe there's not, but is there a player you've ever coached that? he kind of maybe reminds you of in terms of his skill set at all? Um, no, we had a kid at North Dakota State named Chase Morlock that was pretty similar, you know, because he was 215-plus pounds that um, had, had enough speed and, and had enough burst and ran through arm tackles. It'll be interesting to see if Harry has those attributes of being able to block, being able to protect, and then be able to catch the ball out of the backfield, which I, I know he has a skill set to do. We just haven't evolved to that yet offensively. Pick somebody on both sides of the ball who's kind of caught your eye through the first few practices. Who would they be? 
defensively, Justin Hughes is just a really good football player. Uh, as a linebacker, you're learning a new system, and he still plays the game really fast. You can look at any of the guys up front because even though things change, you're a defensive lineman, a lot of things stay the same. But as a linebacker, uh, I watch Justin Hughes play. He's just a really good football player and has really good instincts. Uh, offensively, um, Dalton Schoen's uh, just a really good football player, um, knows how to get open, uses his hands well, um, physical guy. And, and there's a number of guys like that that you can just tell when you, when you f f flip on the video and, and 20 plays or so go, around, go by and you say, okay, that, that guy's played a lot of Big 12 football. And, and there's a number of guys like that. So uh, we're really pleased. It's just trying to keep, get everybody up to speed with the new stuff. Coach, when we talk about putting together a new team for you, we focus on the players, but the coaching staff, how is it unifying the guys that you brought with you and all these kind of different parts you're putting together into a coaching staff? It, it's, it takes time. I mean, we're learning each other, how, how, we, how we coach on the field, what, you know, who's leading meetings and stuff, whether it's special teams or offense, defense. I'm, I'm impressed with Coach Mess uh, because I've been around Courtney so, so much. And, how he's integrated Colin in, wanting in, input from what Colin sees as a quarterback, even though it's new to Colin, he's, he's having some great ideas in there. Uh, it's helped on offense. We have so many guys that have been a part of the system before. Uh, on defense, um, it, it's neat to, to see just all the personalities. There's a lot of coordinator experience on the defensive side, um, and, and Coach Hayes has done a really nice job of of implementing some different ideas that uh, whether Buddy or Tui or, or Van or, or Joe has uh, to try to make us better. And, and uh, uh, But we're also learning each other's strengths, learning each other's weaknesses. And um, the one thing I, I've been really impressed sitting in on both offensively and defensively as we watch practice tape or, or anything like that is there's not any egos in the room, which is uh, uh, something that uh, I didn't think there would be just with the people that I hired, but it was neat to see how they all work well together and, and uh, have great respect for one another. Uh, I'm sure it's not going to be out there you know, three days into spring practice, but when do you intend to put together a depth chart for the first time, and what would the process of that be with your coaches? Probably sometime in August. You really, because we're, we're really not going to scrimmage very much, uh, and it's, it's depth charts are so fluid. Uh, I look at it more of who are the – 17 to 22 guys that can help you on each side of the ball uh, that you know early in the season because you're always going to have another 10 to 12 that you hope help you later in the season. Uh, and then the special teams part is so critical for us is uh, we're, we're not doing as many schematic things on special teams uh, this spring as we are just drill work simply because from a coaching staff perspective, I think it, it gives all these young players an opportunity uh, to compete and show what they can do because I don't know a lot of these kids' skill sets. And, and when you have a competitive drill like you do in special teams, oftentimes the, the, the competitive nature, the, uh, the ability to, to change direction and be physical usually shows out. And uh, uh, so I, it won't be any time this spring for any of the depth charts. One thing that's a change, at least to us around here, not having a specific special teams coach, what, um, what's the process of kind of everybody picking up the slack there and, and the reasoning for that? Yeah, uh, it's the way I've been a part of it in the past. Uh, I, I want multiple people involved. Um, not that there hasn't been multiple people when you have a special teams coordinator, uh, but uh, I think the more voices in the front of the room, you know, for, for us it's great because Van Malone is going to be in charge of the punt return. He's getting to talk to a bunch of wide receivers and running backs that are going to be on that that gives those guys another perspective on, on, on coaching, on dealing with uh, adversity, uh, whatever it may be, so that uh, those young student athletes can take what Van tells them and take it on to later on in life, whatever it may be. But I, I want multiple people in the front of the room. Uh, I think that's important to expose those guys to some different uh, coaches. And so... I think I have four coaches. Uh, Coach Mass will be in charge of the punt, but he has three or four guys helping him. Coach Klanerman will be in charge of kickoff with some help. Coach Anderson will be in charge of the kickoff return with some help. And then Coach Malone will be in charge of the punt return with some help. And then um, Tui will have the uh, PAT field goal block. And then Connor Riley will have the PAT field goal. But then within each of those segments, somebody's got a left side, somebody's got a right side, somebody's got an interior. And so uh, multiple guys, and I think that's just – I think the more people you can have coaching uh, and developing athletes, the better off you are. I was just wanting to know, uh, in terms of just when you're out at practice, do you, because you're a defensive guy, do you find yourself 
kind of floating around there more, or do you try to just kind of go all over, check in with the receivers, check in with the quarterbacks? Kind of what's like daily at practice? Yeah, you kind of uh, early on I've probably been a little bit more on defense to try to help out there just because, you know, we're trying to teach linebackers, and Coach Hayes has got the inside linebackers as well as he's got the nickel. So I've been focusing more on maybe the nickel position or the safety position uh, because I have really good familiarity within the system at those two spots to help out either Coach Hayes or Coach Klanderman, um, especially during these first five or six days just with the installation. And, and uh, uh, it's hard to have one coach have eyes on everybody. Um, and uh, so I'll do that early on. And then, but like meetings, I, I sit with the quarterbacks a lot in meetings. Uh, I'll go sit with the safeties or linebackers a little bit, but I want to make sure that uh, I get an opportunity to be around a lot of guys. I, I'll, I'll have fun. I'll go in with the old lineman here in, in another week or so. I just think that's really important for, for me to continue to build relationships with everybody. And then kind of a follow-up on that. How does that maybe, how you're doing it right now, compare, contrast to how you did it at North Dakota State? Very, very similar. You know, I, I'm going to get to know everybody, and that's the, that's the key for me is to get to know everybody, uh, build relationships with all of them. But they all know, too, that my background's been on defense, and so from um, schematics, X's and O's, technique-wise, I'll probably, you know, I'm not going to tell Coach Riley how to coach an offensive tackle where it's easier for me to uh, help and coach a secondary player. I was wondering a little bit about your perception to this point on the offensive line. All coaches are a little bit different in terms of, sizes and what you want athletically do these guys kind of fit the mold or or is that something that's a work in progress it, it's a work in progress uh, I, i'm really pleased that we have so many returning guys uh, that's the thing that uh, it's experience is hard to beat in the offensive line because they see so many different pictures and from blitzes to different run fits and stuff and and for us um, early on in a practice we're going to emphasize running the football Later on in the practice, we emphasize throwing the football. So for those guys to be able to, to separate the two and make sure they understand some of the run reads and run fits and blitz reads, as well as then get into a third down period or a pass setting, uh, I, I've been impressed with those guys. Uh, I'll, I'll maybe reserve where we're at based on once we get a little bit more contact in. And the other thing that's pretty special for those guys, and I say the same thing to the defensive line, is you get to go against guys that, that have played an awful lot of football. And it's not like you know, a guard's going to just dominate Trey Deshaun the whole time, you know, or Trey's going to dominate uh, Tyler Mitchell the whole time. I, I think that's the neat thing is, is competition brings out the best in all of us. And uh, that's something I, I think those guys on both sides of the line of scrimmage don't take for granted that they're getting great work each day. Switching gears a little bit, Coach. Uh, an official visit period kind of opens up in April. Is that something you typically use or will use, if at all? Well, I, that's new to everybody. I think it just started last year. So um, in the past, I hadn't used it, didn't need to use it at FCS. I don't think it was used a whole bunch in FBS, just being on the committees that I've been on. Uh, it, it's kind of sporadic, you know. David Shaw would, hasn't used it at Stanford. Fitzgerald hasn't used it at Northwestern. Some schools have used it um, for us. Um, we'll pick and choose our spots to be able to use that. Uh, obviously, you'd like to wait until the fall when you get a game day environment. Uh, I think that's the best sell, uh, but in the same respect, not everybody's waiting until the fall. So you try to get these guys uh, on an unofficial visit right now, and that's what we have these junior days, and, and we have a number of them throughout the spring, of trying to get those guys to come on campus. It's still the big key, how do you get them on campus, whether it's uh, through an official or an unofficial visit. But uh, uh, we'll, we'll kind of keep playing that out as April continues on. You mentioned last week that it was killing you to have the names on the back of the jerseys. You still don't know everybody. How far along are you there, and what, what do you do to to learn a, a roster size? That well, I, I feel pretty good. It's just sometimes – uh, when you're when you're far enough away and you're like, wait a minute, now who's that number compared to that number? Because maybe the bodies look the same, um, but it's helped our other coaches. I, I'm probably around all of them the most, so I feel pretty good. But if you're if you're Coach Mess and you're trying to figure out the DBs and, and somebody makes a great play on a route, you don't want to say, hey, good play, twelve. You want to say, hey, great play, AJ. I mean, those are the things that uh, it's still the personal touch here, and and so. I, I feel pretty confident in knowing all the guys now, um, but I know from an assistant standpoint, because I've been there, you get locked into your position and maybe don't get to know somebody on the other side of the ball 
Well, now you can get still get a name with a face, and maybe maybe somebody splashes a play, and at least can look and say, "Hey," because we don't see them as much with their helmets uh, obviously on. Uh, it's, so those kids can or those coaches can be able to say, "Hey, good job," and make sure they know their name. You were familiar with Marcus Hayes in the recruiting process. Mm -hmm. What has he brought to the table so far for the program? You know, he's a real competitive guy. Uh, he's got really good athleticism. You know, people, I don't know if remember or recall, he led the country in punt returns last year at, at New Mexico. So he's a special uh, talent, and, and we're playing him at free safety right now. Um, it's a different system than what he, he did at New Mexico. Um, so he's learning on the run like everybody else. But uh, um, I like his confidence. Uh, I like he's got a little swagger to him as a defensive back. Um, really good communicator, which is what you have to be in the secondary. You know, for us, we need to have a quarterback in the secondary, and he's done a, uh, a really nice job of that right now. And his eligibility status, is a transfer, does he have to sit out? He, yeah, he has to sit out. We're, we're applying for a waiver. We'll see what happens here this spring. Hey, I'm excited. I get to watch some hoops on uh, Friday afternoon before practice. It starts at 4.30, so uh, the timing works out pretty well. Good luck to both the men and the women. I think we're in for a great March Madness. This is a great time of year.